Most of us don't have to worry about being incorrectly quoted because no one really cares what we say, no matter how many followers we have on Twitter. But when you're famous, fake quotes become a defining part of your image, true or not. So let's figure out who actually said what once and for all. We are not amused. Even though we think of Queen Victoria as a scowling old lady dressed in black, she probably never actually said we are not amused. While the rumor has been going around forever, even while she was alive, no one seems to know exactly when she said it. According to the Radio Times, she said it when a servant told a saucy story. Another tale says it was uttered after a performance of HMS Pinafore. Yet another says she voiced her opinion when a whole table was laughing at something she didn't find funny. But Queen V was happier than she looked. The Christian Science Monitor reported that Lady Salisbury claimed Queen Victoria laughed too much. Apparently, she was amused. England and America are two countries divided by a common language. Famous for his witty repartee, there's a possibility author George Bernard Shaw said something similar to this. In the notes of his 1906 play Caesar and Cleopatra, he wrote, We have men of exactly the same stock, and speaking the same language, growing in Great Britain, in Ireland, and in America. The result is three of the most distinctly marked nationalities under the sun. It's close, but there's still no evidence Shaw ever said the exact phrase. It's actually possible Oscar Wilde is the true originator of this phrase, since in one of his short stories the narrator describes a character like this. She was quite English, and was an excellent example of the fact that we have really everything in common with America nowadays. Except, of course, language. The ends justify the means. You could read the whole of Niccolò Machiavelli's most famous work, The Prince, and never find this line and it's not in any of his other works either. In Chapter 18 of The Prince, he sort of alludes to this theory with, let a prince have the credit of conquering and holding his state, the means will always be considered honest. But even if Machiavelli had written this exact quote, he probably wouldn't have meant it. According to the Christian Science Monitor, there's a good chance the whole book was satire. Well-behaved women rarely make history. There's a good chance you already saw this quote today, possibly even on a wall sticker. But Marilyn Monroe never said it. Neither did Eleanor Roosevelt or Anne Boleyn, or anyone you've ever heard of. According to the New York Times, Laurel Thatcher Ulrich wrote a version of this in an article in 1976, though the phrasing was slightly different. Well-behaved women seldom make history. There's no telling who this quote might be attributed to next. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. According to the Phrase Finder, this statement was originally attributed to U.S. Air Force aerospace engineer Captain Edward A. Murphy, who hated the people he was working with, noting that if they could possibly do something wrong, they would. The quote first showed up in print in 1952 when the book The Making of a Scientist quoted a physicist as saying Murphy's Law was, if anything can go wrong, it will. But astronaut John Glenn wrote in his 1962 memoir that Murphy was actually a fictitious character made up by the U.S. Navy for educational cartoons. Whoever came up with it? It totally nails the essence of life. I invented the internet. During the run-up to the 2000 presidential election, Vice President Al Gore sat down with Wolf Blitzer in 1999 and talked about important things he'd done. Snopes reports that he said, During my service in the United States Congress, I took the initiative in creating the internet. What he meant was that he played an important role in furthering the development of the internet, which is absolutely true. In fact, he's even in the Internet Hall of Fame, which is a thing that actually exists. But his critics thought, I invented the internet sounded a whole lot funnier, and the myth was born. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Legendary Indian political activist Gandhi said a lot of really deep stuff, but if you've been saying this quote, you've just been repeating some rando bumper sticker maker. But wait, according to the New York Times, Gandhi did say, if we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. As a man changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. Not quite as catchy. Elementary, my dear Watson. If you've ever read any of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories, you're probably familiar with the detective's iconic saying, Elementary, my dear Watson. The problem is, he never said it. Snope says the closest Holmes comes to saying this phrase is in the short story The Crooked Man. He's just done an impressive deduction of how busy Dr. Watson is with his patients, and this exchange takes place. Excellent, I cried. Elementary, he said. Close enough? I cannot tell a lie. I did cut it with my hatchet. The first thing you probably learned about Washington was that he was our first president. The second thing? He was really bad at lying. The story goes that little Georgie was playing around with a hatchet and chopped down his father's prized cherry tree. When he was confronted, he said, I cannot tell a lie, I did cut it with my hatchet. But the Mount Vernon official website says that this story was invented after Washington died by an author who wanted to cash in on his passing by writing a popular history book. The book was a bestseller, and even though he included loads of other fake stories too, the cherry tree was the one everyone remembered. Thanks for watching. 
click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.